If you are building or planning to build AI voice agent systems for businesses, there's a big issue you'll likely face or may have already faced when preparing these systems for production. And that is as agent complexity increases, so does the prompt size, which causes three main issues, increased costs, increased latency, and a decrease in performance and reasoning. This is a problem I face many times in my work, and I'd like to share a solution with you. But first, for those who don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Hugo Podvorsky, and I run Artillo AI, an AI automation agency. For just over a year now, we've been helping businesses implement AI solutions. One common scenario we encounter is clients wanting to automate multiple departments, sales, customer support, and more, using a single voice agent. This makes the agent and prompt extremely bulky, leading to those three problems I mentioned earlier, increased costs, increased latency, and decreased performance. However, through experience of dealing with this challenge, I was able to find a solution, and that is to build multi-AI voice agent systems. What this means is creating more than one agent, with each agent specializing in a specific task or department. Recently, Vapi, one of the platforms I frequently use, released a feature called Squads. This feature makes building multi-AI voice agent systems so much easier. And in this video, I'll show you how to deploy a squad as well as go over all the essential basics you need to know to get started. Then by the end of this video, I'll call the squad in order to showcase its capabilities and just to show off how it works. Okay, so this is what a multi-AI voice agent system looks like. We have the main agent, which is responsible for essentially one thing and one thing only, and that is to route to the correct sub-agent based on what the person we are speaking to asks or says. So for example, let's say sub agent three over here is the customer support agent. If someone rings our inbound phone number and you know the main agent picks up because that's their job to be the first person that picks up the phone and someone asks a customer support question like, oh, can I get the order tracking number for this? Or can I get a refund, whatever it is, then that main agent should know and should correctly reroute the conversation to sub agent three. And the reason why this is so powerful is because you're splitting these departments into sub agents. So you don't have these bulky prompts and your agents are specialized for the thing that they're exactly doing, which allows them as agents to perform much, much better. Okay, so in this video, I build an e-commerce squad, which has the main agent, again, the same as always. And then we have a product specialist, which I named Cameron and the customer support agent, which I named Emma. Now, Emma's job is to do order management and tracking, returns and refunds and technical support. And Cameron's job is product recommendations, upselling, as well as answering detailed product comparisons, which is pretty simple. And then the main agent's job is, like I said, rerouting to the correct agent based on what that client says. Okay, so now that we know what I'm breaking down, let's jump into Vapi to explain what I did in order to get the working squad. So as you can see on the platform of Appy, we have five different categories, that being assistants, phone numbers, files, tools, and squads. And as you can see, this is the squad I created, Jack, that being my main agent, and then Cameron and Emma. They are flipped the way around. On my Figma diagram, it looks more like that. So I'm gonna get onto this section of the platform in just a moment. What I'm first gonna do is just quickly run down what I did per assistant in order to get the assistant working and running well before we combine them into squads. So in the assistance page, all I did was, you know, cre create the assistant three times for three different assistants. And for Jack, the prompt is pretty simple. I'm not gonna get too in depth on the entire assistance and how I did it and how I structured prompts because that's not the video for this. This is all about how to deploy a squad as simply and as effectively as possible. So as you can see, I just have this initial customer success agent, that's that being Jack. Your role is to briefly assess the customer needs and transfer them to the appropriate department. Then it gets a step-by-step -step plan of what it should do, an example, and then just like keep responses brief and friendly. I'm on GPT-4.0, just makes it easier um, because the model is more powerful. Plus it's not that much more expensive than things like 3.5, it's decently similar speed. So I think 4.0 is definitely the best model for it right now. And then for transcription, all of them have the same one. So I'm just gonna go over this once, that being DeepGram and Nova 2. For the voice, all of them have the same provider, that being 11 Labs. And the voice is just different. So I think this one is Liam. Cameron, I believe is Brian and Emma, as you can see over here is Sarah. For Jack, he doesn't have any tools. Both Cameron and Emma do have tools, but Jack doesn't need any tools apart from the, I guess, tool of being able to redirect the 
uh, conversation, but that's done and set up within the squads. So I'm gonna ignore that for now. And I'm gonna ignore advanced and analysis for now, as that is not important for this video. Okay, so next we can go and look at Cameron really quickly. This is the product specialist, as you can see. Uh, your role is to provide personalized product recommendations and assist customers in finding the perfect pieces. Then I give it a step-by-step -step guide. So ask about their preference, inquire if the item is for themselves, ask about their budget, then use product check, which is one of the tools in its functions section. As you can see here, product check, which I will be going over later on in the video, that is built in make.com, which is a workflow automation platform. Again, to simplify and create a tool very easily, that's where I built it for this video. And then I gave it an example like I usually do. Here is an example conversation. And I told it what tools it has and what that tool does. Then we can go lastly on Emma is the customer support agent. It ha its role is to assist customers with order tracking and general inquiries. Again, I've given it a step-by-step -step guide. So ask for the customer's order ID, wait for them to give the order ID, relay the order ID, going character by character. Um, and then again, an example was given, what tools it has was given. And then I give, gave it in the notes section, you must always wait for the customer to confirm the order ID before using check order. As sometimes I found it not um, confirming and just skipping on. And sometimes that would cause issues with the make.com automation as it wouldn't run. So that is it for the building of assistance. I will be going on to quickly how I built the tools. Again, I'm gonna speed run the whole thing as this isn't the video on how to create the perfect AI voice agent. I do actually have a video on that. So I will leave that in the description. If you've never watched any sort of tutorial on how to build the perfect AI voice agent, then check that out as that will be a much more in-depth guide on how to build these agents rather than this video here. I'll start off first with Cameron's tool, which was product check. It's pretty simple. There is two arguments in the tool. So if I go on product check, as you can see, we have gender and product type. And i.e. if it's for their girlfriend, it would be woman. If it's for boyfriend, men. Simple. Product type. One of the following product types must be spelled exactly that way. The product is either going to be a chain, necklace, watch, ring, or bracelet. Sorry, it should be all bracelet. Then within make.com, we have this custom webhook. As per usual, every tool starts off with a webhook. Then we query our database, that being this product database, which just has the name of the piece of jewelry. So for example, Claude White, the category, so that being men or women, the price in USD, the URL source. So here, if I press it, as you can see, Claude White and this beautiful watch over here. Then we have the product type, so that being a watch. It's not a crazy product database and for product recommendations, you should have a lot more data and information about the product, but I don't own Kaint and I couldn't be asked to scrape their entire website and do a bunch of different things just for demonstration purposes for this video. Then what we do is use those parameters, like I said, and we basically just use them as a query formula for our, for our database. So here we had product type as necklace. So this thing right here would be necklace and the category being woman, this thing right here being the argument gender. Then we retrieve one record. And what we do next is basically take that record data and then just chuck it back to the uh, agent so that it is able to use that information in the conversation. Now, the way that you use tools has changed a little bit and there is a correct data structure on how these tools have to give a webhook response. So that has to be like this results, result, tool call ID. I, as you can see, I have this data structure under VAPI tools. And if you want to copy this, what you can do is just go into tools calling over here, scroll down a little bit, grab this, you know, uh, example right here and then just generate a data structure, paste in that sample data, generate it. And as you can see, it's the exact same results, tool call ID and result, which is exactly what my JSON looks like. Then we obviously pass in that tool call ID into the tool call ID part of the JSON and we can press okay. And then the webhook response is simply that JSON. Then I also wanted to actually send that link of the jewelry item to the person on the phone so that they got a text message with it so that they could actually just, you know, chuck my agent on speaker and be like, oh yeah, I got the link. Yeah, that actually looks really good because you can't describe jewelry as well as you can show it and they are already on the phone with you. So you may as well just send them the link via text. So what I've done here is just added a Twilio step and sent a link, that being the URL source to the number that we are on the phone with. That's it. Very simple product recommendation tool. It is nothing fancy, it's more for demonstration purposes. Then we had the check order tool. This one again is extremely simple. I didn't wanna overcomplicate things. And for this one, the only property we have is the order ID, which is 
structured in something like C125906 or C125907, which is linked to this database right here. As you can see, we have the email, the order ID, the product, the order date, the order status, and the days until next status. This is all just dummy data. So all these emails are just generated by AI. So this isn't leaking anything. And to explain this database just a little bit, as you can see, we have this order status like processing. And that basically means, you know, currently this order is being processed. And then this days until next status tells us that in one day we are going to move into the next status, which would be the shipped. So we could tell the um, person on the phone, currently it is being processed. However, in a day or tomorrow, it is going to be shipped. Or if it's shipped and it's one day, we can say, oh, look, Right now it's been shipped and we know it's going to be delivered in one day. So in order to query that, we've basically just done the same. We search the records on the Airtable database, this time passing in that order ID uh, argument, retrieving that record, giving that to an open AI step, basically to format all that data into some natural language, which is then again added to that same data structure and passed back to the agent. Okay, so that is all for the assistance. I've gone over the prompts quickly, as well as the models we're using, that being the LLM model, the transcription model, and the speech models. And I just went through the tools as quickly as I could. As like I said, these agents are mostly for demonstration purposes, because the real and more important part of it is the squads. So let's move on to that now. If we jump into squads, as you can see, I have this kind of lines, which shows that Jack is linked to Cameron and linked to Emma. The only other thing that I need to do is prompt it. So if we just press these little three dots over here, we have these destination settings, which are extremely important because it is the prompt for Jack to understand when to reroute the conversation and to who. So in Cameron's message and description, I have the message, which is essentially just a thing that Jack will say when rerouting to Cameron. And for that, I just wrote, I'll transfer you to Cameron, our product specialist. There's no queue, so he'll be with you right away. And then there's the description, which is basically the prompt of when and why should you reroute to Cameron. And for that, I just put transfer to Cameron for product recommendations. He is our product specialist. Next for Emma, I wrote, I'm connecting you with Emma from customer support. There's no waiting queue, so she'll assist you immediately. That doesn't matter at all. You just do whatever you think sounds good and simple as that. Then for the description, I just wrote transfer to Emma for order tracking, general support queries, shipping questions, or any customer service related issues. That is all that is needed to be done in this squad section. There is a few other things to get this thing fully working. So let's copy this squad ID up here for now as I move to the phone number section. So as you can see here, I have my phone number that I just got off a trial on Twilio. And essentially right now, if I rang this phone number, it would send an assistant request to my server URL to fetch the assistant. And let's say I had the assistant ID Mary, so that would be 13D8DB2C, whatever. Then it would, Mary would pick up the phone. However, we want the squad to pick up the phone rather than Mary. So in order to do that, the way I've set up my server URL on make.com is very simple. It's when this thing is triggered, it then just sends back the phone number ID as well as the squad ID, that being this 3C24. And if I just paste, you'll know it's the exact same squad ID that I was showing you. When it comes to make.com, that is all you need to do for the basics of deploying a squad. The only thing that you need to do in VAPI in order to get this working is going to setting and getting the webhook URL from this server URL scenario into this server URL box on uh, VAPI. And that is it. That is literally all we need to do. We have the squad ID um, being passed to the inbound phone number when that phone number is being called. So the squad will pick up. And then obviously that squad is now able to reroute conversations because of this prompting we've done in this section over here. And the assistants themselves are able to call tools because we just built the assistants like they should be. If I grab my phone, because I'm using my phone to record, I will call this number and demo to you how this thing works. Okay, so let's call this assistant on my phone to see this in action and see how the squad reroutes the conversation as well as how the tools are used. Hi there, this is Jack, the customer success manager at Kayent. How can I help you today? Hi there, I wanted to get some sort of a product recommendation. Of course, I'll transfer you to Cameron, our product specialist. There is no queue, so he'll be with you right away. Hello, this is Cameron from Kane. How can I help you? 
Hi there, Cameron. I wanted to buy my girlfriend a necklace. Absolutely. Could you tell me a little more about her style? Does she prefer something elegant and simple, or maybe something a bit more flashy? Yeah, I would say she prefers something more simple and elegant. Got it. And do you have a budget range in mind for this necklace? Nah, not really. Just a sec. I have a great recommendation for you. Have a look at our cross necklace. It's elegant and simple, perfect for someone with your girlfriend's taste. I've sent you the link via text. Take a look and let me know what you think. Uh, let me check. Give me two seconds. Sure. Take your time to have a look. Let me know if it matches what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but I do really like this actually. Um, that would be all actually, because I think this would suit my girlfriend a lot. That's fantastic to hear. I'm glad you like it. If you need any more help in the future, feel free to reach out. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Okay. So that was to Cameron. As you can see, it recommended me the product. Um, it sent me the cross necklace as a link. I opened it. I think it looked good. So I told him, yep, that's all good and the conversation was ended by myself. Now I'm gonna call it one more time and this time ask for my order status and see what we get from Emma, as well as to see if the rerouting from Jack, our main agent, is working perfectly. Oh, Jack, sorry, I forgot to put on speaker. How can I help you today? Hi there, I wanted to check the status of my order. Of course, I'm connecting you with Emma from customer support. There is no waiting queue, so she'll assist you immediately. Hello, this is Emma from Kaint. How can I help you? Hi there, Emma. I wanted to check my uh, like order status, I, would, I guess. Sure thing. Could you please provide me with your order ID? Yeah, it is um, C175892. Just a sec. All right, your order hash C175892 has been shipped and should be delivered in the next two days. Oh, okay, so, so it's being delivered in the next two days, right? Yes, that's correct. Anything else I can assist you with? No, that, that'll be all. Thank you, though. No problem. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, so there we go. We got our order status, which would which told me that our product is being delivered in the next two days. Now, Emma did not relay the order ID to me before she used check order or the tool. So that is my own mistake on the prompting side of things. Okay, so that is really it for the video. We were able to build and deploy a squad extremely quickly. All we had to do on Vapi was build the three assistants like we would have in the multi AI voice agent systems, add the assistants into a squad, um, prompt the main agent on when to reroute the conversation to every sub agent, why and when. And then we just take the squad ID and make the server URL that the VAP, that VAPI is sending the assistant request message, basically relay the squad ID as well as the phone number ID back to the VAPI server. And that way the squad actually picks up the phone when we call inbound on to that phone number. There is so much more to learn about multi-AI voice agent systems and VAPI squads. However, the purpose of this video was to explain and to deploy a squad with all the essentials that help you get started on squads. And now you understand the basics of creating assistance, adding, to, adding them to a squad, you know, rerouting the conversations depending on what context and what you know conversation we are in. And that is really all that was needed in this video. So.